بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصمه ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر Respected brothers and sisters, wherever you are, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to begin by congratulating you all on the beginning of the holy month of Ramadan. For some, it will be beginning tomorrow, and for others, for the followers of Ayatollah Sistani, it will be beginning on Saturday, inshallah. Now, as we know, the month of Ramadan is the greatest month in the Islamic lunar calendar. And it is the greatest time of the year. It is a time of spirituality. It is a time to seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is also a time to build and strengthen our bonds with our families, with our community members, with our friends, with our neighbors, with our relatives. This is indeed the month of mercy. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says, شَهْرٌ هُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَفْضَلُ الشُّهُورِ وَأَيَّامُهُ أَفْضَلُ الْأَيَّامِ وَلَيَالِيهِ أَفْضَلُ الْلَيَالِي وَسَاعَاتُهُ أَفْضَلُ السَّاعَاتِ it is a month that its days are the best of days, its nights are the best of nights, and its hours are the best of hours. It is a month that we are invited to be the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, this month is only great for the ones who choose to make it great. There are some people for them, this month will be a time that they will regret later on. And for others, this is an opportunity that they will seize to become better individuals, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a hadith where the Imam says, كَم مِن صَائِمٍ لَيْسَ لَهُ مِن صِيَامِهِ إِلَّا الْجُوعُ وَالضَّمَعُ How many people fast? But all that they get out of fasting is hunger and thirst. وَكَمْ مِنْ قَائِمٍ لَيْسَ مِنْ قِيَامِهِ إِلَّا السَّهْرُ وَالْعَنَا And how many people stand and pray in the middle of the night, but all that they get out of it, all that it produces, is being tired and exhausted and not sleeping. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to take advantage of the month of Ramadan and we have to progress, we have to become better individuals, we have to strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we have to strengthen our relationship with people around us. This is the time to turn to Allah. This is the time to strengthen our spirituality. This is the time to ask Allah for forgiveness. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, the one who is not forgiven during the month of Ramadan, the next opportunity, the next chance that they have to be forgiven is by attending Arafat, by going to Hajj. That's the next opportunity, the next closest opportunity that you have to be forgiven after the month of Ramadan and if you are not forgiven during the month of Ramadan. So we have to try to take advantage of the moments of this month. This is an opportunity that will fly by. On the Day of Judgment, my dear brothers and sisters, every single individual will feel regret. Allah describes one of the names of the Day of Judgment 
is Yawmul Hasra, the day of regret. وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمُ الْحَسْرَةِ إِذْ قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ And warn them of the day of regret when everything has been written. Narrations say that the day of judgment is a day of regret for the mu'mineen and for the non-mu'mineen. Obviously for those who are non-believers, it's a day of regret for them because they will say, why did I not believe? But even the believers, it's going to be a day of regret for the majority. Why? Because they're going to say, why didn't I do more? I had this opportunity that came every year, once a year it came in my lifetime, an opportunity to erase all of my sins, an opportunity to start a clean slate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why didn't I do better? Why didn't I fix my life? So my dear brothers and sisters, let us not make this month of Ramadan be a time where we will regret not doing enough, not having done enough for our lives and for our afterlives. My dear brothers and sisters, a lot of people, when it comes to the month of Ramadan, we tend to minimize the month of Ramadan to only fasting, only fasting and hunger. However, that's not all. Only fasting from food and, and thirst. That, that's not all what Ramadan is. The hadith says, إِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ صَائِمًا فَلْيَصُمْ سَمْعُكْ وَبَصَرُكْ وَشَعْرَكْ وَجِلْدُكْ وَجَمِيعْ جَوَارِحُكْ When you are fasting, then make sure that your ears are fasting with you. That your eyes are fasting with you. That your whole body is fasting with you. Your organs are fasting with you. That you don't do haram, you don't say haram, you don't listen to haram, you don't look at haram. We have to act and treat the month of Ramadan, the day that we are fasting, different from all other days, different from all other times. لا يكن يوم صومك كيوم إفطارك. Do not allow the day that you are fasting to be just as a normal day, the day that you are breaking the fast. This is a day that we have to be God conscious. This is a day that we have to be very careful. One day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi tells his companion, Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, he tells him, Ya Jabir, هذا شهر رمضان من صام نهاره وقام وردا من ليلة وعف بطنه وفرجه وكف لسانه خرج من ذنوبه كخروجه من الشهر. He says, Rasulullah tells Jabir, the one who fasts and prays, and the one who protects their stomach and protects their organs and does not do haram, does not listen to haram, does not say haram, does not practice haram, they will leave this month, the day of Eid, when the month ends, they will leave from their sins just like they leave from the month. So Jabir, Ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, he's a companion, he tells Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, ma ahsan had al-hadith. Oh Rasulullah, this is the best hadith, this is the best thing to hear about. Because it's easy, every single one of us, we are going to fast, and therefore we're going to leave this month, and we're going to be cleansed from our sins. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi tells him, Ya Jabir, wa ma ashaddu hadhi al-shuroot. Yes, the hadith, Talking, saying it is very easy. However, the conditions are very difficult. How many of us can abide by the conditions? How many of us can try to maintain ourselves and have our self-control during this month? Now, my dear brothers and sisters, I wanted to talk about the etiquettes of fasting. There are adab, etiquettes to the fasting, etiquettes to the ibadat. Of course, we have the laws, the ahkam of fasting. This was covered and I spoke about them. And you could see the links of the, um, the laws of fasting. What invalidates the fast, what is allowed, what is not allowed. But there is something extra. There is an etiquette. Maybe this is something that if you don't do it, it doesn't break your fast. However, in order to reach the full potential, in order to maximize the potential of fasting, it is recommended to try to have these etiquettes be a part of our lives. 
There are several points I want to discuss. One of them, my dear brothers and sisters, is that the month of Ramadan is the season of the Qur'an. Shahr Ramadan, Rabi' al-Qur'an. It is the spring of the Qur'an. So the month of Ramadan is a time that we have to keep the Qur'an next to us. You have to carry the Qur'an. Make sure you know where the Qur'an is and you recite from the Qur'an and you read the Qur'an and you contemplate. Because it was during the month of Ramadan that the Qur'an was revealed. Shahr Ramadan al-Ladi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. The month of Ramadan is the time where the Qur'an was revealed. So this is the time that we have to care. We have to pay attention to the Qur'an, and we have to turn to the Qur'an, and we should not neglect the Qur'an. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبْ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Rasulullah, on the Day of Judgment, one of the complaints that Rasulullah will have to God is that he will say, my ummah have neglected the Qur'an. Either neglecting it through lack of recitation, or neglecting it through lack of understanding and lack of tafsir and, and learning and comprehending and trying to think about the Qur'an. We have to reflect on the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Qur'an is God speaking to us. It's the actual words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So during the month of Ramadan, the proper etiquette, the proper adab is to... Read the Qur'an. Try to recite the Qur'an as much as possible. It will benefit you and it could benefit people around you. It could benefit your relatives. It could benefit the deceased from your family. When you are reciting the Qur'an, you could make it an intention to recite the Qur'an on behalf of your friends, on behalf of your relatives, on behalf of your, your parents, your grandparents, whoever has passed away from your family. Read the Qur'an for them as well. And you could consider reading Qur'an for yourself and for others. It doesn't have to be just one person. So the more Qur'an you recite and you send the reward to other people, the more they will benefit and the more you will benefit. So we have to recite the Qur'an. And during the month of Ramadan, the recitation of the Qur'an, the reward of the recitation of the Qur'an is multiplied. Rasulullah says, وَمَنْ تَلَى فِيهِ آيَةٌ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ كَانَ لَهُ مِثْلِ أَجْرُ مَنْ خَتَمَ الْقُرْآنِ فِي غَيْرِهِ مِنَ الشُّهُورِ Whoever recites one verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give this person the reward of reciting the full Qur'an in any other month. So imagine if you read the Qur'an once and twice and recite as much as you can. So this is one, my dear brothers and sisters. Ramadan, the etiquette of Ramadan is to have the Qur'an be a part of our lives. Not only fasting and hunger and thirst, we have to recite the Qur'an. Second, my dear brothers and sisters, the month of Ramadan is the time of dua, the time of supplication, the time of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ ذُنُوبِكُمْ وَارْفَعُوا إِلَيْهِ أَيْدِيَكُمْ بِالدُّعَا Repent to Allah. Ask Allah to forgive you and raise your hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua. Ask Allah for whatever you want. God is so merciful with us that He tells me, ask me. Whatever you want, ask me. So, وَرْفَعُوا إِلَيْهِ أَيْدِيَكُمْ فِي أَوْقَاتِ صَلَاتِكُمْ فَإِنَّهَا أَفْضَلُ السَّاعَاتِ يَنْظُرُ اللَّهِ يَنظُرُ اللَّهُ فِيهَا إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ بِعَيْنِ الرَّحْمَةِ يُجِيبُهُمْ إِذَا نَاجَوْهُ وَيُلَبِّيهُمْ إِذَا نَادَوْهُ The best time to do dua is during the times of prayer. After your prayer, as soon as you finish your prayer, try to sit a little bit longer. Ask Allah for whatever you want. You're, no one's telling you to ask, do dua for anyone else. You do dua for yourself. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for something that is for you, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. Ask, do tawbah, do istighfar, say astaghfirullah, say salawat. These are all du'as. And of course, we have some of the du'as that are recited after the month of Ramadan. Inshallah, I will post them on social media. Some of them, Allahumma rabba shahri Ramadan, ya aliyu, ya azim, Allahumma adkhil ala ahlil 
Qubur al-Surur. These are some of the short du'as that are recited after each prayer. They take you a minute, a minute, two minutes to recite them. So make sure you recite these du'as. And it is recommended every night in the month of Ramadan to recite Dua al-Iftitah. Dua al-Iftitah. For those who tomorrow is the beginning of Ramadan for them, then you have to recite it tonight. It's because it's Laylatul Laylat Awwal. For those who Saturday is the first day of Ramadan, then you recite it Friday night after Maghrib. Dua al-Iftitah. This is a beautiful dua. A dua that connects us with Allah. A dua beginning with praise. Allahumma inni aftatihu thana'a bihamdik. I begin by speaking to you, by praising you. Such a beautiful dua. Of course, this dua, in it we mention the names of Rasulullah and the imams of the Ahlul Bayt. And in it, we do a dua for the imam of our time, for Imam al-Mahdi, Allah ta'ala farajum sharif. We ask Allah, to save us from the difficulties that we're dealing with by the blessings of Imam al-Mahdi. And we ask Allah to change our circumstances by the blessings of the Imam of our time. Of course, there's also other du'as. One of the most beautiful du'as is du'a Abu Hamza Thumali, the du'a that goes to Imam Zayn al-Abideen alayhi salam. He used to recite it during the time of Sahar. In the last one-third of the night, he would begin reciting that du'a. A very beautiful du'a. So this is another point. We mentioned the Qur'an, we mentioned the du'a and the supplication and speaking to Allah. Another very important point, my dear brothers and sisters, is that it is highly, highly recommended to give iftar to the Muslims. They don't have to be poor. They don't have to be someone who's in need. Feeding the sa'im, feeding someone who's hungry. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he says, مَنْ فَطَّرَ فِيهِ مُؤْمِنًا صَائِمًا كَانَ لَهُ بِذَلِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عِتْقُ رَقَبَهِ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ لِذُنُوبِهِ فِي مَا مَضَى Whoever feeds a person who's fasting, you help that person break their fast, you invite that person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sins and Allah will give you the reward of freeing a slave. Imagine, you feed someone and Allah gives you the reward of freeing a slave in the way of Allah. Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, he says, one of the companions of my father, Imam Zain al-Abideen, came to Imam Zain al-Abideen. And he was... By the name of Sadir al-Sayrafi. This man he used to exchange. He had some money. So the Imam, Imam Zayn al-Abideen is telling him something. He tells him, Oh Sadir, do you know what day it is? Do you know what time it is? Sadir says, yes, this is the month of Ramadan. Sadir tells him, uh, Imam Zayn al-Abideen tells Sadir, he tells him, Oh Sadir, can you free Ten slaves from the children of Prophet Ismail during this month. Are you able, are you capable of freeing ten slaves each day and each night? Sadir, he says, O son of Rasulullah, I have money, but I don't have that much money. So then the Imam tells him, can you free nine slaves? He said, no, my money is not enough. Can you free eight slaves? No, my money is not enough. Until he says, can you free one slave? He says, no, I don't have that much money. So... Then the Imam السلام, he tells him, you can't break the fast of one person? So Sadir, he smiles and he tells him, is this what you meant by feeding the fast of a person? Yes, I can feed the fast of 10 people. Then the Imam السلام, he tells him, yes, if you feed, if you break the fast of 10 people, you will receive the reward of freeing 10 slaves from the children of Prophet Ismail السلام. So, it's not difficult. Of course, the Muslims, when Rasulullah tells them, can you feed, the, feed the, uh, the, the people who are fasting, break their fast? Some of the Muslims, they said, Ya Rasulullah, we're poor. We can barely feed ourselves. Rasulullah tells them, Ittaqun nar, walaw bisharbatin min ma. Try to avoid the hellfire even by giving a cup of water to someone. Even a piece of date, one date, you give it, that's sufficient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
looks at the quality of your action and not the quantity of your action. In a beautiful hadith, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, My grandfather Zain al Abidin, Imam Ali ibn al Hussein, he says on a day that he used to fast, he used to order for a sheep to be slaughtered and it would be cut up and they would cook the meat. So once it comes close to iftar time, he would go and he would see the boiling meat and the water in it and he would smell it and it has a good smell. So the Imam alayhi salam, he would tell the people with him, he would tell them, bring me dishes and trays and he would fill the tray with meat and food and he would say, send it to Al Fulan, send it to this family, send it to this family. And then Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, Imam Zayn al Abidin, he would feed the people and then he would go and break his fast with bread and water. This is Imam Zayn al Abidin alayhi salam. This is an Imam who shows us to care for people because the philosophy, the, what, one of the greatest lessons that we should learn during the month of Ramadan is that we have to care for people. We have to think of those who do not have. And this is the best time to do so. So we mentioned feeding the needy. And in a hadith from Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al-Kadhim alayhi salam, he says, Iftar al-Sa'im afdal min al-Siyam. He says, feeding someone who's in need, someone who's fasting, the reward is greater than the fasting itself. So let us keep that in mind, my dear brothers and sisters. Another very important etiquette of the month of Ramadan is to have suhoor, to wake up at sahar time and to have a bite, to eat something. Sahar time is before fajr. As long as you eat before fajr, that is the time of sahar. The last few moments, the last half hour, the last hour before fajr, that is the time of sahar. It is recommended to wake up and eat. And this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is what Rasulullah used to do. So we do it because it's the sunnah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says, as barakah. Eating suhoor, getting up for suhoor, this is a blessing. In another, in another hadith, he says, لا تدع أمتي السحور ولو على حشفة let my ummah, my nation, not leave the suhoor, even to get up and have a piece of date, one piece of date. Having a piece of date, drinking a cup of water, this is enough. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And when you get up for suhoor, there's a benefit in it. Some people, they say, I'm too tired, I'm exhausted. There's a benefit in it, my dear brothers and sisters. One is that you get up and you're going to eat, you're going to eat something, and that will give you the, the strength to be able to endure the fasting. This is one. And second, which is perhaps more important, and that is that when you get up, this is an opportunity to pray a few rak'ahs. This is an opportunity to recite some of the Qur'an. This is an opportunity to recite some of the du'a. When you're, getting, when you're up and you're eating, don't just feed your body. Make sure that during those last moments of the night before Fajr, first of all, you stay up till Fajr time so that you could pray the Fajr, and then pray Salat al layl pray the midnight prayer. Pray Nafilat al-Fajr, recite the Dua, recite Quran, recite Dua al-Baha, Dua Abu Hamza. These are some things that we could do. And of course, if you can't recite the whole Dua, recite one page of it. If you can't recite, listen to it and read the translation. We shouldn't do, if it's not all or nothing, we shouldn't have that all or nothing mentality. If you can't do all, do a little bit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it. This is the month of blessings, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you while you're sleeping. Imagine if you're actually praying and reciting Quran and supplicating. One question people have is, what is insak and what is fajr? Imsak is precautionary time to stop eating because we can't really, it's really difficult to tell the exact time of Fajr. So we stop at the time of Imsak as a precautionary measure so that we're not eating and we're not doing anything which may invalidate the fast into Fajr time. So this is why Imsak is about 10 minutes, 15 minutes before Fajr time 
during that time, from Imsak until Fajr, stay awake, do dua, do istighfar, do whatever you can to strengthen your spirituality. Finally, the etiquette of the month of Ramadan is to, of course, it's obligatory to break our fast. We break our fast once it is Maghrib time. That's the time that we break our fast. Now, of course, while breaking the fast, there are several things that we should do. Some of us, we forget that we're fasting and we just jump on the food. No, those last moments, this is the time right before you eat, right before you put that bite in your mouth, do a dua. The etiquette is to do dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your fast. So you say, Bismillah, Allahumma laka sumna wa ala rizqika aftarna fataqabbal minna innaka anta sami'u al-ali. Bismillah, you say Bismillah before starting any time you're eating, not only during the month of Ramadan. Bismillah, Allahumma laka sumna. Oh Allah, we fasted for you. Wa ala rizqika aftarna. And because of your sustenance, through your sustenance, we are breaking our fast. فَتَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ So accept from us, you are the all-hearing, the all-knowing. And it is recommended at the first bite to say بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا واسع المغفرة اغفر لي In the name of Allah, the mercy giving the merciful. O oh, one who his mercy, his forgiveness encompasses everything, forgive me, O oh Allah. Of course, some people, a lot of people ask this question, can we break our fast first or do we have to pray first? Or what is more important? Scholars say, and this is the hadith from the imam, he says, it is more recommended to pray before breaking the fast. Unless there are people waiting for you and you praying is going to delay them from eating. So in that case, you're allowed to break your fast before praying. Or the second exception is if your hunger is so much that you will not be able to concentrate in prayer. So therefore, at that time, go and eat something and come back and pray as soon as you can. Don't delay the prayers because many people, when they break their fast, they get heavy and it becomes hard to move around. So then the prayer is delayed. So my dear brothers and sisters, these are the etiquettes of fasting. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all to accept the, your a'mal, to accept your fasting and your prayers during this holy month and to bless you all. During this time, we are quarantined. But let us make this a time where we focus on our relationship with Allah, where we improve ourselves and we become better individuals. Nas'aluka Allahumma wa nad'uk bismika al-azim al-a'zam al-a'az al-ajal al-akram ya Allah. يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك على كل شيء قدير وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب الفاتح مع الصلوات اللهم صل على